Hello, my name is Leslie Dill, and today I'm going to talk about social media and its effect on interpersonal relationships. We've all been told at one time or another how social media sites are killing our face-to-face -face communications with each other, probably by a parent or a grandparent that was, travel that was trying to talk to us face-to-face. -face. But our parents and grandparents also wrote letters or made long-distance telephone calls. And these letters, especially, took time and effort and they might not even reach the receiver until days or weeks later, making the message content that much more meaningful. Generation Y tends to hide behind our computer screens, phones, and tablets, seemingly preferring to live in our own technologically driven worlds. Let's see, have you ever like texted a family member that was in the same house or apartment or in the room right next to you instead of just walking over there to interact with them? We're all guilty of something as silly as that, but the sad truth is it's a reality in today's world. Social media has become a crutch for so many of us in ways that we don't even consider, and sometimes it isn't even the fault of social media. Sometimes television and other communication apps are to blame. David Curteau in his book Media Society states, Timestrap parents sometimes use the TV as a surrogate babysitter, allowing their children to watch hours of TV in one sitting. In these cases, media products are connected to the ways we interact with other people on a daily basis. And we're all guilty of that too. Our parents or grandparents, when strapped for time, probably sat us in front of the TV instead of hiring a babysitter or just taking us on as, you know, an extra responsibility that day. It's so much easier to do, but has such a negative effect on our communication style. Now let's talk about narcissism at its finest in today's society. Kim Stoltz, a former America's Next Top Model contestant, addresses these issues in her new book, Unfriending My Ex and Other Things I'll Never Do. Stoltz addresses how social media has shaped her generation, people who check their phones while talking to other people, and how it negatively affects personal relationships. Stoltz says, sometimes it simply means that you get home at night to spend time with your significant other and you have nothing to talk about. This could be because you spend all day talking, either texting or snapchatting and scrolling through each other's social media feeds so there's nothing left to talk about at the end of the day. It's a sad reality that we all have to face but we're all guilty of it all the time. I've been guilty of maybe choosing not to hang out with my friends because I already know everything that's going on in their life. Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, Snapchat. There's so many ways to be connected to one person that it's almost making face-to-face -face communication obsolete. Now let's talk about the irony of FaceTime. People think we've begun to fix these issues of face-to-face -face communication with apps such as FaceTime for the iPhone, which allows you to see the other person and your own image in a small box in the corner of the screen. Now think to yourself, why exactly do you need to see yourself when you're talking to someone else? It's basically like a glorified mirror. Isn't the point of talking to someone else that you're interested in what they have to say and what they're thinking? I mean, if you're going to do that, you might as well just look in a mirror and talk to yourself. Do you spend more time on FaceTime looking at the other person? Or your own face in that little box? We have somehow created an app that allows us to simulate face-to-face -face conversation while being able to look at ourselves. That's pretty narcissistic. But let's look at the big picture and why blaming social media for our problems is a problem in and of itself. Social media isn't completely to blame for these social issues that we face. A plethora of sources such as violent video games, racy television programs and lyrics, and the internet certainly contribute to a huge chunk of this constant need for validation and communication with others. Why would there be a new app out every other day of the week that allows you to talk to the people that are probably sitting next to you in class or at work? Karen Sternheimer, a professor of sociology at the University of Southern California claims that while social media is arguably the biggest contributing factor to these issues of communication, overexposure to other news and entertainment also play a heavy role. The moral of the story is, put your phone down, turn your computer off, and take a break from the television, as hard as it is. I'm guilty of it too. If you want to improve your relationships with people, go out and talk to people. Texting them or liking their statuses will not improve your long-term relationship. 
unplug and just talk.